I am truly honored to have that opportunity, this opportunity to share with you certain wisdoms and insights that I have learned in my life that has made me into a more confident and recognized leader in my industry. Throughout my career, and now in my own company, Digital Lit, I have always been very passionate about inspiring businesses and people to think differently. From a business perspective, I love helping businesses produce inspiring marketing solutions. But from an individual perspective, I love inspiring people in new ways and how to seize opportunities others ignore or helping them build strategic thinking skills to get the results they are seeking, either in their own business or their personal life. So today, I'm going to share with you some methods that I have lived by in my life that will help you achieve greater success and create a life that, you, that will just make you come alive. And now what I mean by success is becoming what you want to be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. It's very important to get across. Now, I am not sure exactly where everyone is in their life today, but if I ask you to describe your life or what it feels like, what would you say? Do you have areas of your life that you would like to change? But why haven't you? Are you feeling stuck? You know, maybe it's because you wanted to make a career change or a transition, or you're, you want to learn a new skill, or you just don't know how to take your business to the next level. Or you know what, maybe you guys really have a good life, but you just know it could be better. So if you can, if you can relate to one of these situations, then you are definitely in the right place. Because sometimes the biggest thing holds you back from getting greater success in your life is something that you might not even be aware of. You know, don't get me wrong. There are times in our lives when we feel we're on top of the world, utterly invincible. Every aspect of life seems to be right on track. You know, perhaps you were accepted into that exclusive college, you nailed that pitch at work, you passed that exam. The feeling that everything is going right is incredible. But I believe we all have those other times in life that we have marked as lows or low points. These are the type of situations that we are going to talk about today so that the next time you go through one of those lows, you will be able to look at that situation differently and feel empowered to turn it around. But to accomplish big things in our lives, whether it's personal or professional, we all know that a vision and a plan are needed so you can understand what to do and how to do it. But even if you have the most amazing, innovative, unique vision, a detailed plan, I'm here to tell you it's not enough. No matter what goal you want to accomplish, there is something within you that gives you the power to either push you towards your vision or block you from it. But before I tell you what that power is, let me tell you a little bit about what I went through that was starting to block me from my vision. So as Maggie told you, I spent the, the majority of my working for corporations. I love working for big corporations because it provided me structure, operations, resources, experiences, training, and a steady income. I got really good at working inside political environments and understanding internal processes and how to be very successful with it. So I was really, really comfortable. I loved all the challenges that was put before me. I was so such a confident person and I held very, very different positions within the company. But about three years ago, I decided to take the risk and start my own company, Digital Wit. Now, I knew this decision would be very uncomfortable for me because working in a corporate environment provided me with so many things that now I had to figure out how to do on my own. So my vision for Digital Wit, crystal clear. Solid strategy, solid plan, understood my budget. So I knew exactly what to do and how to get there. I felt I was properly prepared because I didn't want any false fantasies because I know that even though positive fantasies would allow me to anticipate success in here now, it wouldn't alert me to the problems that I would face along the way. So I had all the proper tools in place, so I felt ready. Let's go and start my business. <laughs> But there was something that happened to me that I, that I haven't experienced before. My confidence was shaking. Things that came so naturally to me, I 
was starting to doubt myself and I wasn't understanding why I was, I wasn't getting the results I mapped out for my business. Processes, tools, and methods I used in corporate environment were not working. So I started to feel this uncomfortableness and I started to ask myself a question if I made a mistake. Should I just go back to what I'm comfortable with, the corporate world? But I knew in my heart I had a passion to help people transform their future and their business through marketing. So this, and this was definitely my true one. So I decided to press forward in building my business. But I had to figure this out. What was causing my confidence to shift? So I decided to talk with very successful entrepreneurs that I personally knew, as well as research and study iconic entrepreneurs who have made an impact in the world so that I could emulate them. It really helped me to be able to look at someone else that went through the similar trials and tribulations. I then took what I found and immediately applied it to my life, and boy, did my life change. During, during my research, I was very surprised in what I found, because I thought I would find, you know, each of them would be the same, they would have the same personality, they would same skills, they would have the same characteristics, but all of them were different. They look at Oprah and Steve Jobs, totally different in every way. The way they work, the way they relate with people, their personalities, so that, so I had to keep digging. And what I came across is that these people all had, all have happened to approach everything they touched in a certain way. They saw every challenge or unknown as an opportunity versus a constraint. All of them achieve success by, by applying a certain growth mindset. You, everyone here, has the, pet, the same exact power within you to either move you closer to your vision or to block you from it. And it all starts with your mindset. Now, to achieve success, here's exactly how they went about doing it. First, they had to heighten their awareness. They, were, they had to take charge about what they were thinking and identify what kind of negative beliefs they were believing. Second, their own belief. They were standing in their full power and they lived a limitless life. And finally, confidence. They always believed in taking action. So let's start and Let's start and breaking down the success code even further. The first thing is taking charge of your negative beliefs. Now, most people aren't consciously aware of their negative beliefs. They are putting, they are putting on themselves, making them hesitate to take action or preventing them from reaching what they want to do in life. So what is a belief? A belief is simply taking an, an, an opinion and treating it as a truth. And beliefs create the map that guides us towards what we feel is or is not possible. It gives us the power to take action. So where do these beliefs come from? They come from our past, our environments, where we grew up, events that have happened in our life, and your past achievements. The challenge is that most of our beliefs are generalizations about our past and have shaped our thinking to determine what you can be and what you can have or what you can't have. Everything you do is based on your belief. It creates this blueprint for your life. So when something comes up and it doesn't match your blueprint, you feel scared or you feel bad. Like think about it, when something happens in your job or your business and you're not getting the outcome that you expect, what do you normally think about? How do you behave? Let me give you another example. Um, let's say if you were offered a job that is very similar to the one you have now, but with a higher salary, I bet the majority of you would probably feel very comfortable in making that decision to take that offer because you know exactly what that job would expect of you and what your day-to-day tasks would be. Now, there may be different personalities that you need to work with, and you may need to learn different processes, but overall, the tasks will be pretty much the same. 
we feel very comfortable with this decision because we humans prefer to live in certainty, right? It makes us feel like we're in control, that we, we know exactly what's coming next. We are much more comfortable making decisions when we know the outcome versus trusting the feeling of the unfamiliar. But the problem is that this can cause us to miss out on things we want. So, what if you got a second offer that is your dream job with the exact company that you have wanted to work for since you were a teenager, right? The only problem is that this job is two grade levels above your current skill and level and abilities. So would this offer cause you anxiety? What kinds of thoughts would you have? Would you be wondering if you could do it? Will I fail? Right? The outcome of, of success is riskier for you, so you start to feel very uncomfortable. You start to think, this is too scary. I don't want to take this opportunity like this. So your mind then tells you that the wiser and safer choice will be to go with the first job offer because that will bring you more certainty. But if you continue to think like this based on certain outcomes versus exploring the unfamiliar, it will put limits on reaching your desires. If you never take this dream job, you will never, you will have to live with not knowing what that outcome would have been or what your life would have been. See, we continually think based on uh, thoughts. We constantly are, everyone's life is, moves according to your thoughts. We process over 60,000 thoughts per day. So, you are constantly working through your thoughts. I am constantly working through my thoughts. My mind is constantly receiving thoughts. You are constantly receiving thoughts. My world is fashioned by my thoughts, and your world is fashioned by your thoughts. So let me give you an example of how a famous entrepreneur processed his thoughts. For instance, most people would get very angry if they flight was canceled, leaving them stranded on an island until the next day. But when that happened to Richard Branson, who was a very successful entrepreneur, he realized that all of the fellow passengers were stranded as well. And that gave him an opportunity. He thought, what if I could charter a plane and then sell seats to his fellow passengers to cover the cost? And that's exactly Branson made it home on time and in style, and he also made a little profit. So then, having validated this idea with very little risk, that is what was the start of his airline, Virginia Atlantic Airlines. So you see, most people become upset when they encounter difficulties, but successful people will look at a problem and think, hmm, is there a way to solve this? Where is the opening? They look at every challenge as an opportunity, not a constraint. So let's figure out how you can be more aware of your own negative beliefs. I have an exercise that, I, that might make you feel a little uncomfortable, doubtful, or conflicted, but that's a really good sign. It means that your beliefs are kicking in and trying to pull you back towards the familiar. You know, the allure of the familiar is very strong, and it will take a lot of mental energy to overcome its pull because we feel safe in certainty. It's, it's not easy to repattern the thoughts, but if you're going to create the life you want and you're going to and think more in line with the opportunities and not constraints, we must heighten our personal awareness around our thoughts. Here's the exercise I want you to do, and you can do this after the webinar is over or when you feel ready. You know, these questions will be sent to you in an email from Savvy Ladies afterwards. So, so please don't feel worried if you can't write them down right now um, or you're not in a place where you can. But what I would like you to do is, is to get a little notebook and pen so you can carry it around with you or use your phone, whatever you feel more comfortable. Because I want you to start to listening to yourself think and talk for the next 48 hours. What thoughts are expansions and what are contradictions? When you come across a voice of a contradiction, I want you to write what that thought is. Now, these thoughts are called, called closed systems, and they, and they reinforce your 
limited release or constrictions. So an easy way to heighten your awareness on all your thoughts is to take notice what you are saying after the word I. So the voice of expansion always says, I can, I will, I choose. However, the voice of constriction often says, I can't because I won't. I don't know how. I've never been able to. I'll always do this. I don't want to anyway. So what this will do, it will you'll start to see where your constraints in life is starting to hold you back in certain areas. And for some of these people, dealing with these exercises might be harder for others, but having these obstacles and difficulties is always going to be part of our life. We're human. We're just always going to have experience, and these things will always happen. So we can't get rid of these difficulties. However, the purpose of this exercise is for you to start recognizing your certain thought patterns that you are blocking for you achieving and going where what you want in your life. So after you do that exercise, now we're going to go to the next level, and that's belief, standing in your full power. You know, um, when, when you limited beliefs are those that we believe about us that holds us back. And we, if we have limited beliefs, we need to figure out how to create new ones. So to give you some more examples, these, these are just limited beliefs are excuses of why we fail or why we refuse to, to even try. Beliefs like, I'm not good enough, I'm not educated, I get everything wrong, I'm not likable. These beliefs stop you from feeling good about yourself. And if you hold on to them longer enough in your mind, they actually become truths. See, we start to develop these types of beliefs during our childhood. Perhaps you grew up feeling like an outsider or you had critical parents. And those types of experience could lead you to become fearful in certain areas of your life. Those types of conclusions will cause you to subconsciously seek evidence that supports your belief. So every time you fail a test or you get rejected by someone, your negative beliefs will be in your course. And what is really interesting is whenever you discover evidence to the contrary, like I ace that test, I land on that promotion, you'll chalk it up to external factors like, oh, I was just lucky, and we'll explain any inconsistent evidence away. You'll, you'll start to ignore your accomplishments and you will magnify your mistakes. And this is just how the brain works when you believe something wholeheartedly. We reject what doesn't fit our belief. So one of my limited beliefs was about failure, right? I was raised to believe that we are born for success and there was limited cushion for me to experiment unless I was achieving what I should be achieving. But when I started to view everything as not a learning, as not a failure, but a learning experiment, and experience, I started to see that the success I was looking for. I mean, we all love Tom Jen, Thomas, Jeff, uh, Tom, Thomas um, Edison because he had a vision to invent electricity. But that's not right why I really love him. What I really love about him is that he didn't concentrate on failing a thousand times. He conditioned his mind to view it just as a thousand steps in his journey. So, I love also this quote by Henry Ford that says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So, what we need to do is we need to start smashing those limited beliefs and create new ones. Smashing our limited beliefs may well be more of the most difficult thing that you have to do. After all, our beliefs are what make us who we are. So you have to start off slow and make small tweaks. Small tweaks often lead to big changes. So to help you do that, and again, you, this will, you can, these questions will be provided to, you, provided to you after the webinar. I have some, some questions for you to ask yourself. And they are the following three. How have I been conditioned? Why am I getting the results I am getting? 
how can I change my way of thinking or my condition? So for example, if you believe it's hopeless, ask, how is it possible? If you believe I'm worthless, ask, how do I deserve it? Some of mine examples that I had to go through were before I used to think others' opinion of me are more important than the opinion of myself. Now, others' opinion of me reflect their character, not mine. I used to think helping others is my job. Now I think helping others is one of the greatest lessons. Before I used to think, oh, well, what I think of myself doesn't matter, but now I think what I think of myself shapes my entire life. It's critical. So before we get into this last point, I just want to recap, okay? We have learned to heighten our awareness around our thoughts and to identify those thoughts that are constricting. We have also learned that we now have more clarity around how beliefs are formed and thinking. We also understand how to change some of our limiting beliefs. And now let's talk about confidence, taking action. So it's easy to identify confidence in a person, right? When we can all sense when it's, when it's in a person. All they have to do is open their mouth or perform a certain task or just be present in the room and they exude confidence. As you are looking at this person internally, your confidence is saying they can get it right. They are valuable. I am so glad they are in the room with me. Confidence is a feeling or believing that one can rely on oneself or something. It's, it's a trust in another person's abilities, capabilities, and judgments that he or she can successfully meet and challenge the demands. So the big question is, how do you get that type of question? How do you get the type of confidence? Confidence builds every time you take action, try things you, that you find hard, or go outside your comfort zone. Now, fear and self-doubt are the biggest rates that will keep us from taking action. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown. Sorry to say that any time you have to try something new that you've never experienced before, you will have fear. So you are not going to be able to eradicate fear from your life. But a confident person refuses to live in fear. And the secret is to is to learn how to figure out how to take action even though you are afraid. So let's break this down a little bit further. There are two layers that make up confidence. And to be confident, you must master both layers before you can truly have the confidence you need to start reversing your fears and becoming what you want to be. The surface level is competence. And then the second level is your core. Let me explain. So competence, by definition, is your ability to do something successful. This is what other people see you. This is the way you communicate, how you do your job, how you live your life, the people in your network, etc. It is really constructed on solid achievements. So let's say you want to learn to play the piano, but you don't believe you will be any good. So you take lessons, practice, and sure enough, if you put enough effort and learn to play the piano, you will build the, your confidence because you have mastered a, a task that you once thought was daunting. So confidence is the process of having the necessary skill to be successful at something and becoming a master of that craft. You know you will have, you have confidence in it. You just know. So to obtain it is just the start of building confidence. Because the problem is that if you only have this layer of confidence, it is, there's nothing beneath that layer. So think about it like an iceberg, right? You only see the top above the water, but you don't know how deep it goes beneath it. So when something happens in your life, if you don't have the next layer of confidence, your confidence on the surface will likely disappear. The second layer or that deep layer is called the core, your value, your purpose, the why behind you do the things that you do, the driving force behind your existence. Your core is there when everything else goes away. It still remains. You can lose your job, family, friends. But if you understand your core, purpose, or your calling, it is 
one thing that will remain when nothing else remains. How come it remains? Because your purpose becomes stronger than your outcome. It becomes your driving force, shapes every decision you make and every opportunity you take. You know it's your core and your purpose when you feel it's something bigger than yourself and you start to care more about why you're doing something versus concentrating on what you're doing. So if you're at a job and you have to do a pitch you know, to another business, you're not concentrating on what you are selling. You are saying the things you believe in because it is who you are and what your belief is in. So to obtain the confidence at the core level is to really get clear on your why, your purpose, your unique value, your desires. If you don't know exactly what it is, that is perfectly okay because life is a journey. And it's about taking these small steps. Sometimes all you need is to be passionate about the next step you take because life is a series of opportunities to learn. So it's okay if your steps change direction at any time. It's more about taking the step and seeing what it produces. So keep asking yourself questions like, how would achieving this goal make you feel? Why do you think the things you do? Building confidence takes time and can be painful. But the process is kind of like when you go to the gym so you can build some muscles, right? Muscles can't be built overnight. But if we keep on going to the gym on a daily basis, we keep on lifting those weights, eventually they will get lighter and lighter and you know what eventually you're gonna start seeing your body to be transformed. So I encourage every single one of you to please stay in tune to your thoughts and have complete trust in yourself. Keep on gaining your confidence by increasing your competence and seeing your unique value. And to help you do that, just to kind of recap of what we've been talking about, is one, increase your awareness with your thoughts. Always challenge those limited beliefs, those things that are holding you back from not taking the step forward. Challenge, look at all opportunity, look at all challenges as opportunities, not constraints. Take action. Even if it's a small step, go outside your comfort zone. Success comes with steps. Don't be afraid of failure. Think of it as an opportunity to learn and stay connected to something higher than yourself. And I just wanted to end, and I love this quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. where he said, I knew in my heart that the message was true. As far back as I can recall, my prayer has been the same. Use me, God, show me how, how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use it for a greater purpose than myself. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. That was great. Um, and I see we had some questions uh, come in during your presentation, so um, we'll move on to Q&A now. The, the first question for you is, can you fake confidence? So you, when we talked about confidence, it's those two layers, right? One is on the surface, which is the competence, and the other is the core. And you can fake the top level, the surface. Everyone can, you know, you can practice, you can do the job, but it's when things, if you truly want that foundation, that true confidence, so that no matter what approach you in life, that you can go with it head on and look at it an opportunity, you need to have those two layers. So to answer your question, yes, you can fake it, but then that probably means you don't have full confidence. Okay. Thanks. Another question for you is, are ego and confidence the same thing? So ego and confidence are very much different. Um, your e confidence has to have faith in your own abilities and to believe in yourself. But the ego is something else, something so entirely because it operates out of self-interest. You know, it looks at I am the face. I want to seek approval from others. I want accolades. But confidence doesn't do that. Confidence, as we were talking about before, is more about the calling that you have, you know, to help others, to is something so deep inside of you that, you know, you don't care if anything goes wrong, what people are saying, 
you know, what you've lost in the past because it's so deep inside you, it overrides any outcome or anything that you can advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, great. Another question is, what's the difference between courage and confidence? That's a, yeah, that's always, always a debate, that one. <laughs> but, um, you know, I believe courage is a result of confidence. Um, you've never seen, think about it, you know, you've never seen a courageous person that was not confident. You know, it's really difficult, you know, it's, it is not the difficulties that, that defeat us. It's the lack of confidence in ourselves that defeat us. So to me, you know, you need confidence to take that first step. And you need, once you see that you become more and more competent in, in what you're doing, it will give you the courage to make, to take that step. So I believe, I really believe that courage is a result of confidence. But some people think that, some people think, you know, otherwise. But based on my studies of just, you know, famous people and myself in my life, um, it, I feel that it's the confidence that really drives the courage. Okay. okay. Um, and the last question we have for you is, are all limited beliefs bad for you? Yes. And the reason is because they, limited beliefs will cut you short of what you, what you want in your life. Um, and you will never ever reach your potential. So to me, beliefs overall are good. But when they become limited, that's where they're not good for you because it's going to keep you from um, living a life that, that really makes you happy and fulfilled inside. Okay. All right. Thanks, Carol. And I think, did you have um, another slide to share with us? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So if anyone um, on the call has any additional questions or something that they want to talk about a little bit more in length, uh, please, there's my contact information. I'd be more than happy to, to email or get on the phone and, and, to and talk more about it. Okay, great. Um, and as Carol mentioned, we'll be sending out the, um, those exercises and questions in a follow-up email. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much for a great presentation, Carol. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.